Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope you're glad to be back for the semester. Glad we're at least on campus anyway. Uh, and this is uh, an introduction to Psych 101. Psych 101. So I'm going to go over the syllabus here in this lecture um, and uh, talk about what we're going to do uh, this semester in Psych 101. Uh, and um, you should probably watch this prior to watching the lectures, I would say. But what I want to do to start is let's have a little bit of fun before we go over the syllabus, which isn't much fun. Uh, what I want to ask you to do is I'm going to show you some dots on the, the screen here. And I'm going to ask you to do the easiest thing anyone's ever probably asked you to do with those dots. I want you to look at these dots, but don't count them. Look at these dots, but don't count them. Okay? Got it? All right, here we go. Uh, second here. There you go. All right. Here's a bunch of dots. Don't look at. Don't count them. Now you don't know how many there are, right? Oh, that's good. All right. Let's try it again. Look at the dots. Don't count them. Don't know how many there are, right? All right. That's good. All right. Again. Look at the dots, but don't count them. All right. You don't know how many there are, do you? Oh, uh, yes, you do know how many there are. No, 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 no. I told you not to count them. Not to count them. Let's try it again. Look at the dots, but don't count them. Look at the dots, but don't count them. Here we go. Oh, you did it again, didn't you? You counted them. You know how many there are. All right. What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is a phenomenon known as subitizing. Subitizing. And what subitizing is, it's a process in your brain that when you have uh, items in your visual field, and there are four or fewer, some people would say five or fewer, but very good evidence for four or fewer, your brain automatically counts them. This is like an uh, what's called an automatic process. It's a process that you cannot shut off. It occurs in your brain uh, whether or not you want it to happen. Uh, on the other hand, if you got more than five dots, then there's a separate process that you can use to count the dots. And you know, you'd be able to count the dots if I had more than, than four dots. And that's what's called a controlled process. And a controlled process is something your brain can do if you want it to do it, or not do if you don't want, you, want it to do it. And so there are two different parts of your brain that determine uh, how many things are out there, one of which is an automatic process for things when it's four or fewer, and one of which is a controlled process when it's five or more. And so, for example, a dog or a cat, they have that same automatic subitizing process for things four or fewer that you have. And so a dog understands what four, three, two, one, and zero are. Uh, but, and the dog, if you gave it a choice between four bones and three bones, no matter how they were arranged, the dog would go for the four bones because it can tell four from three. But let's say, on the other hand, you had like about eight bones as versus seven bones. The eight bones were kind of uh, clustered closely together while the seven bones were kind of spread out. Well, the dog does not have that counting process, so we can tell seven for eight. The, the dog doesn't understand the difference between seven and eight. But it, uh, so it would probably just go by the general area, and it would think that the seven bones that are more spread out actually had more bones than the eight bones that were closer together because it looks like a bigger pile. So that's the kind of thing we're going to be talking about uh, during the semester here in Psych 101, the strange things that go on up in your brain. And so this is Psych 101. Now, there are three sections, but it's kind of silly to talk about sections, A, B, and C, or 1, 2, and 3, because this semester, everything's online. We are never going to actually meet in person. You're going to do the tests on your computer. You're going to watch the lectures on your computer. So we're not actually going to meet in person. The whole thing is going to be online, all three sections. Now, technically, when if we were meeting during the day, uh, the first section would start at 8 a.m. Uh, typically, they have, we had sections at 8 a.m., 9.30, and 11 a.m., and I would teach them back to back to back. But since that's when we typically have lectures, that's when I will post the lectures for the class. So the lectures will always be posted by 8 a.m. on Tuesday 
and 8 a.m. on Thursday for you to watch, okay? And I'll show you where those are posted in a little while here, and I'll talk more about the lectures generally. Okay, but let's talk about the people involved in the class. Uh, Eric Cooper, that's me. I'll introduce myself a little more in a second. And then we have two other instructors for the class, Allison Phillips and Max Will. Now here's the thing. Uh, Psychology is a very, very, very broad field. There's no single human being that is qualified to teach Psych 101. It's just such a broad field you can't know really everything about psychology. And so that's why we have three separate instructors for the class. Each one of us is an expert on a different aspect of psychology. So let's talk about each of them. Uh, Dr. Phillips, she'll be teaching after me. She got her PhD in 2011. She's a social psychologist, and she's been here in Iowa State since 2014. So she'll teach the lectures right after I do. And then after her will be Dr. Gwill, Max Gwill. He's a social psychologist. He got his Ph.D. in 1998, he's been at uh, Iowa State since then. Now, me, uh, I'm a perceptual psychologist. I got my Ph.D. at Minnesota in 1993 and been at Iowa State since 1994, so a long, long time. Been here uh, before most of you were even born. Now, I want to uh, talk a little bit maybe about my philosophy and maybe what you're concerned uh, about with the class. Uh, let me address what you might be concerned with uh, to begin. I know, uh, I bet a lot of you, this is your first semester of college, and that was me too when I took Psych 101. Uh, that was my first semester of college too. And uh, it was an in-person class, of course, when I took it. And I didn't know quite what to expect. I sat kind of near the door because here was what I was worried about. I had in my mind a stereotype of what uh, psychologists are like. Uh, I guess, and so my concern was, here was what the class was going to be like. Like the instructor would come in and say, Class, the goal I have for all of my classes is that at some point during the class, you get to meet your inner child. And when you meet your inner child, I want you to tell them, Hey, I know sometimes you're lonely, and scared, and that's okay. Now, I want everybody in class to get up and hold hands, and I want you to share with us a time when your inner child was sad. Oh my goodness, get me out of here. Uh, I was so worried that it was going to be some kind of touchy-feely thing where we sat around getting in touch with our feelings and talking about our inner child and stuff like that, and I didn't want to sit for that at all. So that's what I was worried about. Maybe some of you are worried about that, too. Well, look, don't be worried about that. I am the least touchy-feely person you're going to meet during the course of your lifetime. There will not be any touchy-feely stuff in any class that I am involved with. So you don't worry. You're not going to meet your inner child. You're not going to get in touch with your feelings. You're not going to go to your happy place. You're not going to find your power animal. None of those things are going to happen during the course of the class, okay? So don't have to worry about any touchy-feely stuff like that. Now, let me explain my general philosophy for the class. I, I don't want to make the class hard. That's not my goal. In fact, I always thought a teacher's job was to make learning as easy as possible. Uh, I want to make it fun and, and interesting. And so I try to make my lectures as interesting as I can and deal with stuff that uh, I think will be uh, of value to you. So my goal is for you to get fired up about psychology as a result of the class. That That's really what we want uh, to do here is get you excited about psychology and, and think that uh, psychology can uh, be of value in your life. So for me, the best classes I took when I was an undergraduate were the 101 classes. I took uh, an Econ 101 class that just really changed my thinking about everything. And then I took this Anthropology 101 class, uh, and the guy who taught it, uh, at least he, it was divided into sections as well, and he did the first section, and he did the physical anthropology section. I, didn't, I never even heard of physical anthropology. I didn't even know what it was. And it was so cool. It was so interesting. It really changed uh, everything I thought about it, uh, my life as a human. Uh, and it really changed my life, and I've been interested in both economics and uh, physical anthropology 
my entire life because I took both of those classes. And so I thought those were definitely worth way more than I paid for the class for both those classes. But it can go the other way as well. I had a sociology class, a 101 class that was just terrible, and a biology 101 class that was just horribly boring. And so I thought biology was boring, and I never took any more biology as an undergraduate, which was bad because it would have helped me a lot in my career. So a class can be boring, too, and not get you excited about it. So I don't want it to be like that. So that's my goal is I don't want to try to make the class hard. I just want to get you fired up about psychology uh, is what I'm looking for here. So that, that's what I'm trying to do when I give my lectures. All right. Now, my office hours are, well, we're not supposed to have physical office hours. And so I have online office hours. And uh, I'll be there. I got it set up. And I'll show you on the Canvas site. There's a place on Canvas or on the right side where it has WebEx, and you can sign up for an appointment with me. We're also going to set it up where you can sign up for an appointment with the course TA uh, if you go to that site. And so what we'll do is uh, you can sign up. I got 15-minute appointments there, and you can uh, sign up for that, and I'll be in my office during those two hours. Uh, and we can talk during that time over the web. So that's how it works if you want to talk to me. Now, of course, uh, if you don't want to talk face to face but just have some questions, well, we'll have a course email to send all your questions to. And I want to strongly encourage you to ask questions uh, that uh, you should send your questions there if you don't need to meet in person. All right, we only have one teaching assistant this semester. And she's also going to be operating entirely online. Now, she's going to have WebEx office hours between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., uh, and that's on Wednesdays and also on Fridays. And then you can make an appointment with her as well. And I should say, yeah, you can make an appointment with me. Uh, write uh, email to psych101 at iastate.edu. Tell them, uh, give me some times when you'd be available, and we can set up an appointment if you want to do that. But you can also sign up for WebEx appointments with the TA on Canvas if you prefer to, to talk with her that way. All right, now, the class email address is psych101 at iastate.edu. And this is really important, so important that this will be one of the questions on the first test I give you. What email address do you send to every single email? Here's the thing. This is a huge class, and different people are involved with different things. If you start sending, like, you send something to my personal email or you send something to the TA's personal email, uh, it may not get to the right person. That's the problem. But the beautiful thing is, if you send every single email, if you've got a question about the lecture, if you've got a question about the, the test or your grade or anything, just send it to psych101 at iastate.edu and it'll get to the right person. If you send it to somebody else, can't guarantee it's going to get to the right person. Okay, so any email you have, any question you have regarding the class you want to send an email about, be sure to send it to psych101 at iastate.edu, and it will be forwarded to the correct person. Okay, we're going to have a supplemental instructor, and I think uh, I'm not 100% sure how she's going to do her sessions right now. I think you got an email uh, probably on Monday. Um, where it asks you like what times you'd be available. You don't have to fill that out if you don't want to. But that's how she's going to decide when to schedule her sessions. As soon as uh, Meredith has scheduled her sessions, I will let you know about those. So I'm going to give you more information about the supplementary instruction. This is just a totally optional, totally optional tutoring sessions, essentially. Group tutoring sessions is what they amount to. So that's what the SI uh, instructor is. We'll talk more about that once the SI sessions are scheduled. But it's important thing for you to know is it's totally optional. All right. So our textbook is Psychology in 12th Edition in Modules by David Myers and Nathan DeWall. A lot of people have been emailing me asking me if they should buy the physical textbook. I don't think you should. It's going to be available online. We've never done it this way before. It's a little weird. I'm going to show you this in a second when we go to the Canvas site, but the book is available electronically online, and there's a way to get to it from the Canvas site that I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. There's also, the lectures are going to be totally online. So I'm filming the lectures, and then we're uh, going to put the videos up online, 
And like I promised, the videos will be available at 8 a.m. on Tuesday and Thursday. By 8 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday. So um, right now it is Monday, August 17th. And as we speak, the first video is up. And in fact, yeah, let's talk about uh, Canvas right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the course Canvas site and show you some stuff there. Okay. So, Labadudo. All right, here is the Iowa State website. So I presume you all know how to get there. It's iastate.edu. All right, now once we are here, uh, you want to go to your sign-ons, and then you want to go to Canvas. See right in that? Okay. And now you want to look at your courses. My dashboard here. <coughs> Stop that. And here is Psych 101, all sections fall 20. So you should have that. So we're going to click on that. Bloom. And we got some stuff here. All right. <coughs> uh, let's see what we can do. I want to make sure I get it all on here. Okay. So here's some important stuff. This is the course shell. And what we've got are several things I want to show you. We've got a uh, menu over here. I'm going to be sending out announcements. And here's an announcement here. I sent one uh, earlier today. Welcome you to Psych 101. So this is how I'm going to be communicating with you. Uh, we got assignments. And that we don't have any assignments. So you don't have to worry about that. We're going to have quizzes. And when the tests appear, they're going to appear in the quizzes section. I'll mention that when I actually have a test up there. We don't have any tests up there yet, but uh, when the test comes up there, I'll, I'll send you an email. When I send you the email about the test, I'll also mention that it's in the quizzes section. You got grades and, and other things. Let's go back to home. Okay, but the action here, if you want to read the syllabus, it's here. So you can click on that and it will download the syllabus that I'm going to show you. And now here is a textbook, the ebook information. And what we've got here. This is a video that shows you how to access the ebook. But let me show you how to access the ebook. Really, what you should do is you should learn use the Macmillan Learning Launchpad. And you know, if you can't follow what I'm doing now, watch the video online. Macmillan Learning Launchpad. Now, I think it's going to ask you to sign in, and it's going to you need to sign in with your Iowa State email address, but the password is not your Iowa State password. You have to have a special password for Macmillan. And maybe if you have another class where you got a Macmillan password, you'd be okay and you could use that password. But for me, when I tried to access the book this morning, I had to say forgot password and then it'll go through the process of resetting your password and then you make up your password that you want. So it's not, let's be clear, it's your Iowa State email address that you need to use when it asks you for your email. But then you will probably have to use the forgot password option to reset your password. Uh, and then you use that password to log into here. So after you've logged in, you'll get to here. And then you go to this thing that says achieve. This thing that says achieve is where the book is. All right, so here's Achieve, and when you get to Achieve, all right, it's got my name up here. Ah, sorry, let me move this over. All right, it's got my name up here, and when you log in, it's going to have your name up here. Okay, and what I'm going to do, this is in the Achieve thing, read ebook on Virtual Source Bookshelf. Boom, do that. All right. Taking a while. All right, but here it came up. So here's my uh, Psychology 12th edition in modules. And let me explain what modules are. So instead of having chapters in the textbook, we're going to have modules in the textbook. And the um, difference between chapters and modular modules, what a modular textbook is like, is each little chapter or module is self-contained meaning that you don't have to have read other parts of the book in order to understand that section. 
And the reason we do it this way is because we have three separate instructors, that lets us assign the readings in any order. Now, uh, what you'll see is it's really bizarre how they do this, the table of contents over here. I don't quite understand it. But if you're going to see on the syllabus, let me get the syllabus. Here's the syllabus. If you downloaded the syllabus, it would look like this. Zuba duba duba. Okay. Uh, all right. What, what point was I trying to make? All right. Oh, yeah. So here in the schedule, it says what the readings are. So here we go. Uh, so here for 818, that's tomorrow. Here's my topic, history and overview. And then it says you're supposed to read mod 1. And for Thursday, that's 820, I'm going to talk about research methods. You read mods 2 and 3 for those. And that's going to be the first week. Our first test will include questions over these three mods. Remember, they're called mods instead of chapters. Mods 1, Mods 2, and Mods 3. All right, well, let me show you where those are. This is kind of stupid, and I don't know why they do it this way. But they don't have the mods over here. They have the weird page numbers over there. If you click on Story of Psychology, you get Module 1, and then go to Module 1. You click on the top thing, and there's Module 1. Module 1. So this is the actual text for Module 1. You need to read this text. Now it's up to you. Uh, I would think it's probably better for you to read the text before you watch the lecture, but you can read it after you watch the lecture, whenever, um, whenever you feel comfortable doing it. But this is your reading assignment for Thursday is Module 1. All right, I'm going to go back to the original, back to home, I guess. Okay. This is really dumb how they did it, like I said. All right, now I did that one. Now let's do this one. I click on that. This has modules two and three, and that's for uh, Thursday. So this is your reading for Thursday is going to be module two. And so I'm going to need to read all of module two and all of module three, module three, two, uh, for Thursday. Okay, so that's where you're going to do the reading. Now, some of the questions on the weekly tests, we're going to have tests every week, are from the readings. Now, the tests are open book, open notes, uh, but uh, I don't think you're going to have time to finish the tests if you have to read the textbook on the fly for every single question. So that's why it's important to keep up with the readings or do the readings, I would say, before you begin the test, okay? So it's going to be a little bit of fishing around where you have to click on these things to look for the modules you're supposed to use. Uh, but that's how it maps up. Uh, you're supposed the uh, syllabus is going to tell you what modules to read, and the uh, and then you just read them in the textbook that's on the uh, Canvas site. Okay, so let's go back to. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to home. All right, let's go back to our home page. All right, so that, uh, if you didn't follow how to get the textbook, uh, we have uh, this link here, like I said. Let me show it again. This also has a tutorial about how to sign up for uh, the textbook and, and get it going, okay? All right, now, most of the action. We each have, of the instructors has a folder, and most of the action for this semester is going to be in my folder, Dr. Eric Cooper's material. So let's click there, and let me show you what I got. Okay, well, I got my office address and office phone number. I want you to send every email to Psych 101 at IA State. If you want to send an email to me, that's okay. Just send it to Psych 101 at iastate.edu and it will get forwarded to me. So I don't want you to send it to my other email address. Send it to this one. And then I've got office hours from 1 to 3, and like I, I'll show you in a second how you can sign up for those online. All right, now here's an important part of uh, the course. What I've got are lecture outlines for my eight lectures, and the first lecture is uh, for 818. And I've also got the lecture for 818 down here, okay? So here's what you should do. These are the lecture outlines are up here. Uh, and I'm going to click on a lecture outline. Open up an 
Come on. All right, and it downloaded it to my computer. And now, ah, all right, it's kind of crazy on me. Oh, but, all right. Here's what we got, okay? And I'm trying to make this just like we would be doing it if we were doing it in the regular classroom or during the normal year. This is what we would do. Now, this is kind of weird, and I thought it was weird when I first started teaching it, but uh, I've gotten used to it, and I think it's a good way of actually doing things. Here's the thing. I want you to take notes during the lecture. You're going to pay a lot more attention to the lecture if you're taking notes uh, while you're watching it. And to help you take notes so that you don't have to copy every slide, as you'll see, a slide will come up during the lecture, uh, and the slides are going to be in the order right here in this uh, outline. But what the, what the lecture has is some of the text on the slides, but then there's a blank space for you to fill in the rest of the text. So the first slide I'm going to show you in the lecture for 818 is uh, psychology, the science, and then what the rest of the stuff that was on the slide you write in the blank here. So what you do is before you watch the lecture, you print this out. And what this is going to allow you to do is take very efficient notes during the lecture where uh, I hope you won't have to like pause the lecture to take notes. You can actually take notes while it's going and that'll save you time. And then you can use these notes on the weekly tests that you're going to be tested on. But this is the best way to study for it and the best way to take notes is to use these outlines. Okay? So that's what you should do is before watching each lecture Print out the outline, or some some people uh, are really sophisticated and they can figure out how to, um, you know, uh, make the outline such they can type things into it right online. And if you're smart enough to do that, uh, that's great. But I think most people would probably just print them out. But that's what you should do. So I got already got the outlines for all eight lectures. I don't have all eight lectures up yet, and unfortunately, I can't show you. I do have on the same page. I'm going to have the lectures. I will send you uh, an email every time one of the lectures comes up. So uh, right when I post it, I'll also send an put it, sorry, I'll post an announcement on the Canvas site saying that it's up, uh, and then you can go to the lectures there in this folder as well. Wish. Well, I can't. <sighs> this is very frustrating. See, I can't show my whole desktop on here, and it won't let me scroll down enough to show you the lecture. But if you go to Dr. Cooper's exam, <laughs> Dr. Cooper's material, uh, what you'll see is there's a lecture section, and the video for the first lecture has already been posted there. That's where the lecture is going to be posted every day. So you could print out all these lectures uh, at the same time if you wanted to, or print them out right before you're going to watch the video. But it's up to you when you watch the videos, it's just that you're going to be tested Friday and Saturday is when you're going to be tested. All right, so it's this folder. Let me go back to the home. Okay, it's, so it's. This, my folder, uh, Dr. Cooper's material, it's on the Canvas site. <laughs> I can't show it to you because I can't scroll down. Oh, this is so maddening. So that's just the way it's going to have to be. You'll see it when you get to the, the site. And there's some other stuff uh, available on the Canvas site as well that we're going to show you in a minute. Okay, well, uh, next thing, let's go back to our PowerPoint slides. Uh, academic dishonesty. Now, let's talk about what that constitutes during this class. And so, you are allowed on the tests in the class to use your notes and to use the lectures. What you are not allowed to do is use another person, another student in the class, or uh, anybody like somebody else who knows about psychology. That you're not allowed to use. So you have to answer the questions yourself. And if we do find out that you have been cheating by using another person, you will be referred to the Dean of Students for uh, 
discipline. I think they're up to what the discipline is, but that's what's going to happen, okay? So using your book and using your notes on the test are fine. Using another person on the test is not fine. Okay? You have to do it yourself. All right, we're going to give a 30-second break during and twice during every lecture. And you'll see this when I do my lectures. Uh, this is one of the things that they found in psychology is that you uh, have better memory consolidation if you take a break while you're learning something for a while. So every lecture will have a couple of 30-second breaks for you to uh, just uh, allow you to think about what we've just been talking about and consolidate. So here's the 30 seconds. All right, that was our break. I got, I don't know, I'm going to go crazy here and try something sort of crazy. All right, let me see, if, let's see if I did like this. I'm going to make a real small little window. Let's see, ah, <laughs> fools, I figured it out. All right, I made a small little window, and now I can show you some of the stuff I couldn't show you before. So, uh, this is the front page of the Canvas site, okay, and... Here is the syllabus. That'll download the syllabus if you look at that. And you might want to download that while we're doing the lecture. Here's the stuff. If you click on that, that gives you a little video about how to access the textbook if you aren't sure how to access the textbook. Then, most of the action during the semester is going to be in my folder, Dr. Cooper's material here. You can see here are the lecture outlines. And now, here's the lecture. So, you can click on this and watch the lecture for uh, August 18th, okay? What you do is print out your outlines beforehand, have them with you while you're watching the lecture, and fill them in as you're watching the lecture. I think that really is the best way to learn the material. All right, good deal. I'll figure out how to do that. All right, let's go back to our presentation now. All right, so, course calendar. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, we're operating on kind of a weird uh, schedule this time. This is in the syllabus again. We're operating on a weird schedule uh, because we're starting on August 18th and ending before Thanksgiving, which we didn't used to do. And so, uh, because of that, the schedule is a little bit different than it has been in the past. But what you can see is under the course calendar section, moving it over here, I got the dates over here. I got who's instructing over here. I got the topic here. And then I have the readings here. And so what this means is the, this week it's going to be uh, history and overview on Tuesday and research methods on Thursday. And here are the mods you're supposed to read. So the test we're going to have starting Friday, the test will open up on Friday, is going to be over these two lectures and these three mods. Now next week, like Tuesday uh, on August 25th, we'll talk about brain and behavior on Tuesday and then part two on Thursday. These are the mods for that section. And so the test uh, next week, that would be the week August 25th, will be over these two lectures and these three mods. Okay, These are the mods you should read in the textbook. Uh, and what I've got is, for all the other instructors, we have the same thing. We have the lectures and the mods you're supposed to read, and their tests will be over their lectures and their mods for that particular week. So this is a total. I'm going to be here, actually, for just four weeks. They're going to be here for, I think Dr. Phillips is going to be here for four and a half, and Dr. Gwill will be there for four and a half is how it's going to work. And so I'm going to give you four tests, and they'll give you five tests is pretty much how that's going to work. All right, so that's the course calendar. All right, let's go back. Okay, so let's talk about the test. The test will be held every week over the lectures and readings for that week. And I'll put up an announcement on Thursday every week, being very clear about which lectures and which readings in the textbook 
are a uh, fair game for that particular test. Now, the test is going to be 30 multiple choice questions. You're going to have 45 minutes to complete the test. So 30 multiple choice questions. You have 45 minutes to complete it. It's open book, open notes, so it's okay to use your book and your notes, but you cannot use another person. Now, having said that, can you just not read the textbook and then take the tests and then try and look up the answers in the book uh, as you're taking the test? You can try. I don't think you're going to have enough time. You're going to run out of time if you do that. And so that's why you need to be prepared and know the stuff before you start the test because you only got 45 minutes to answer the 30 questions. So I really don't think there's going to be enough time for you to look up every single question in your book or every single question in your notes. And some of the questions about the lecture may involve stuff that's not explicitly in the outline of uh, notes that I sent you, but is something that I did mention while I was discussing it in lecture. So that's why important. it's important that you watch the lectures because they're good stuff in there. Okay, so how this is going to work, and I'll send you again an announcement on Thursday, every Thursday about this. The tests will open at Fridays at 12.01 a.m. That's the first time you can take the test. You don't have to take it then. You don't have to wake up at midnight. But essentially, you have all day Friday and all day Saturday to do the test. But once you start it, you only have 45 minutes to complete it. So you need to find a place that's going to be quiet and you're not going to be disturbed for 45 minutes to take the tests on your computer. You can take them any time between Friday at 12.01 a.m. and Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, but the, So the latest you could probably start would be 11.14 p.m., right? So you'd have 45 minutes to start it on Saturday. So you really need to have started by 11.14 p.m. Uh, to do it. Now, there are going to be 14 tests for the 14 weeks in the class, but we will drop your two lowest scores. We'll drop your two lowest scores. Now, there are not any makeup tests, but that's the reason we have this thing where we drop your two lowest scores. Let's say, I don't know, you had some kind of emergency, you had to leave town, you didn't have access to a computer, you lost access to your computer one Friday and Saturday and didn't have access to it. Well, you don't get to make up the test, but you'll get a zero on the test if you didn't take it. But remember, we throw out your two lowest scores. so. Just make sure you don't have two more than two emergencies during the semester. Do your best on every test so that if you do have an emergency, one zero won't knock you out. But there aren't any makeup tests, no matter what, even if it's the worst reason in the entire world. No, there's no makeup test. You got to take it between Friday at 11:01 a.m. Uh, sorry, 12:01 a.m. Friday to 11:59 p.m. Saturday. If you miss it, you don't get to make it up. You have to take a zero, but Remember, we're throwing out your two lowest test scores, so that'll be thrown out. So, the total points in the class from the tests is 360 points. 360 points. 12, your 12 highest times 30 points is the total number of points on the tests. Okay, and here's an example of the sort of multiple choice question we might have on the test. There'll be five option multiple choice. Who was the founder of scientific psychology? Ischenmacher, Leibniz, Lutenmeyer, Wellendorf, or Wundt? I don't know if uh, any of you have uh, had uh, psychology maybe in high school and know the answer. The answer is Wundt, actually. E. E. Wundt. Okay. Okay, and the breakdown of the questions is, like I said, they're going to be both over the textbook readings and the lectures. So typically, 25 to 35 percent will be only over the textbook. 25 to 30 percent will be only over the lecture, and then around 50 percent will be covered in both the textbook and the lecture. So that's the breakdown. So you can't just watch the lecture and pass the tests, or you can't just read the textbook and watch the text tests. You're, you're going to miss a lot of points if you do that. You got to do the readings and you have to watch the lectures in order to do well on the test. Okay, so that's how the breakdown of the tests is going to be. All right, let's take another 30-second break.
Okay, back into these. All right, now we talked about the te points you're going to get from the test. There's another type of points you're going to get too, and that's points from research credits. So uh, when you do Psych 101, you have to do uh, research studies. Every psychology student in the country has to do research studies. Uh, and you're no different. Uh, so uh, some of the points in the class are on these research studies. So let's talk about them a little bit. Uh, you're required to do 10 uh, what are called credits. And the number of credits you get, typically it's going to be one credit. That's what most are They're the, for the short experiments. If it gets longer, then you will get more credits. But you need 10 credits total. And they're each worth two points in the course. So 20 total points in the course will come from your research credits. Now, there are two ways you can get the research credits. One is to actually participate in research studies. I think that is actually the easier way to get your points. But if you don't want to do that, the other is to read published studies and uh, answer, uh, do a summary of the study. And then we'll also have an option where you can get some extra credit uh, for doing these things um, if you uh, uh, do some extra. And we'll talk about that in just a second here. Okay, but let's talk about our two options. So, but option one is to actually do some research. And here's the deal. You're going to need 10 credits total. And so most studies are going to be 30 minutes or less is what you're going to find. So you'd have to do 10 of those to get your credits. But there are going to be some that might give you more credits if they're longer. So I'll show you. It'll, it'll tell you on the study when you sign up how many credits it's worth. But that's how it works. So most of them are going to be one credit. You have to do 10 of those to get all your research points. Okay, well let me show you where we go. You use the SONA system to do this. And now I'm going to show you the SONA system. So I'm going to go back. That's the Canvas site. I want to get to the Iowa State site. So let's just a second here. Okay, here we go. All right, we're at the Iowa State site right now. And what you need to do to sign up for research is you've got to get to the psychology department home page. The psychology department homepage. I'm going to go to the index, and then I'm going to go to P for psychology, and I'm going to go down to psychology. See here, psychology to that. Sorry, let me get it on there. Psychology department of right there. Okay, so psychology department of. I'm going to click on that. Now, you might want to bookmark this page. That's up to you. But this is uh, our Department of Psychology homepage. Oh, boy. Let me make it bigger. There we go. All right. You see, when I make it a little bigger, you've got at the front Research Sign Up Sona right here. So this is where you have to go to sign up for the research credits. You go to the Iowa State University Department of Psychology homepage. You use the index. Go to P for Psychology, click on Psychology Department of, that'll get you here. Then you can go to Research Sign Up SONA. All right. And here we got the Research Sign Up system in SONA. And what it will do is this. Uh, you're going to use your user ID. So this is your Iowa State email address. That's your user ID. But here's the thing. The password is not your Iowa State email address password. You cannot sign up for experiments right now. Let me repeat that. You cannot sign up for experiments right now. You're going to have to wait very soon. You are going to be sent a, a password for the SONA system. So this will appear at your ISU email address. I don't know when it is because I don't send them out. That's the SONA administrator sends them out. But I will send, uh, post an announcement on the course website when the SONA administrator has sent those out. So I will remind you of that. So let me emphasize, you cannot sign up right now because your password is a unique password for this system that credits it to the right class. Now here's the thing. Some of you, other, some of you may be in multiple classes that use the SONA system. And people have asked, can I, can I use the same password for all my classes? 
No, you cannot. You have to use different passwords because you have to use the credits differently. The credits are credited differently to the two classes. So if you have two classes that use the SONA system, you got to use your Psych 101 password to get credit for Psych 101, and you got to use your password for your other class to get credit for that class. If you got two classes, you can't use the same study for credit in both. You have to decide one or the other. Okay, you have to decide one or the other. And if you have like an old SONA password, don't use that because you won't get credit for Psych 101 if you use that. You got to wait until the SONA administrator sends you the email with your password. As soon as you get that email, you can start signing up for experiments. And you'll see what will happen is once you log in, there'll be a big list of experiments. You can click on them to see a description of them to see if it's something you might be interested in. Some of them will be like online things that you just do at your computer at home. Some of them will be laboratory studies where you actually have to travel to somebody's laboratory in order to do the study. So there'll be some like that, and then you have to go uh, to the actual laboratory. You'll be signing up for a particular time in order to do the study. But it'll be very obvious uh, how to sign up for the various research projects once you get into the sonuses. Okay. If you have to cancel, there's also a place to cancel, and we're going to talk about canceling in just a second. But the things to emphasize right now are, number one, the let me go back and show you where it is, the place where you sign up is on the Psychology Department homepage on this Research Sign Up SONA link that's up in the upper right-hand corner of the homepage. And that'll take you to here. You're going to get, I would guess, either late this week or early next week, you're going to get a password to the SONA system. As soon as you get that password, you can log in and start signing up for experiments. You are required to get 10 credits, 10 research credits, during the course of the class, and that'll be worth 20 course points. Okay? All right, so that's the SONA system. Okay. Go on. All right, so if you sign up for a study where you have to go in person and you fail to show up, you will uh, get notified. And if you have three failures, you're locked out of SONA, and then you won't be able to repeat any more research credits. Now, they have an option on SONA to cancel. If your schedule changes, you can't come to an appointment you've made, you need to cancel, but you got to cancel 24 hours before the study, or else you're going to get a failure. You're going to get a failure, okay? So you can cancel right in the SONA system, the same place you signed up. You can cancel there, but you got to do it 24 hours before your appointment. If you get looked, if you miss three appointments, you're locked out, and you'll miss all of those research points. I'm sorry, but that's how it works. Okay, so you log out, and then Friday of Dead Week. Friday of Dead Week, and let me let me check my calendar to make sure that that is. Yeah, that would be Friday, November 20th would be the last day to do a research study. Friday, November 20th. All right, you got a second option if you don't want to do research studies. This option, what you can do is you can... Uh, read a published article of research and then write a summary of the article. Now let me explain how this works. I'm going back to our Canvas site. So we're, we were at the psychology department website but now I'm going back to Canvas. Alright, I'm going down to Psych 101. Alright, here we go. Uh, okay, and now I want to show you what I'm talking about with option two. So if you don't want to do experiments, we got another option you can use to actually get your research credits. And to do that, we're going to click on the bottom link, completing the research credit assignment. Here, this is, this is option one. It describes option one. But here's option two. You can see the description of option two. So what you have to do is, we've got a list of articles, and I'm going to show you where the articles are. They're right on Canvas. 
And then what you need to do is, you don't have to do this. Again, you can get all your points through research credits, but why is it doing this? All right, we're going to do this. All right, so you got to do a two-page, double-spoiced, 12-point font, one-inch margin summary of one of these articles. And you can do any of the articles you want. There's, uh, You'll see they're listed, but you don't have to do them in that order. Or, you know, you can do as many or as few as you want. And the essay that you write should summarize the reading and then critically evaluate it, say whether you think the research is justified or not uh, based on what you learned in the class. And if you do a conscientious job, you know, if it's all clear that you're doing a good job, you're going to get the credit for it. We're not going to be real hard asses on, you know, uh, how, how good your paper was, I'll admit. As long as you're doing a, a reasonable job and trying, you're going to get the credit for this one as long as it's long enough and accurately summarizes the article. Okay, so if you, uh, the problem is if you don't meaningfully analyze the article, if you plagiarize somebody else, or you don't get the two pages, then you won't get the credits. But otherwise, as long as you do those things, you will. Now, after you've done your summary, what you do is you send an email to psych101 at iastate.edu. You have the uh, topic line, the subject line, be research option two, and then you attach your summary. Uh, it should have the name and authors of the article that you're, um, that you're summarizing. And here's uh, where you get the articles. Okay, so here's click on that option two for reading articles, and then you go here and it says re research articles option two, and here you go. We got all these articles you can choose to read and summarize. So you get your choice. Uh, do as many as you want. You can do ten of them and get all your research credits this way, uh, or you can do as many as you want. But that's where you get the articles. Let me show that to you again. So I'm going to go all the way back to the home page. Here's the home page. Here's, you go all the way down to the bottom and it says completing the research credit assignment. You click on that. And then if you want to go to the part with the research articles, you go research participation credits option two. You click on that. And then you click on that. And you got all the articles open one, it'll download it, you read it, just do the two-page summary, send it to Psych101 uh, at iastate.edu with research option two in the subject headline and the Psych101 TA will grade it and tell you how you did. That's how it's going to work. Okay, so you can do ten of those articles but you can only do one a week. If you want to get your credits this way, you pretty much have to start now, okay? So start, and you can start this now if you want to. You can do one this week if you want to. Just do what I said. Go click on one of the articles, read it, write a two-page summary, send it to psych101 at iastate.edu, and you'll get the, the two points for this week. We don't want you to wait until the very last uh, week and then try to do ten of them. Uh, so that's why we limit it to one a week. And so you need to do them pretty much every one every week if you want to use the research option, uh, sorry, the article option. Now for the research experiments, you can do as many of those a week as you want, but if you wait till the last week, there may not be any studies for you to do. So I would not recommend waiting for the last week to do all your research studies. Last day to read, do a research study is also Friday of Dead Week, which I believe is November the 30th. November the 30th. Okay, but the point is here that research credits can be earned by any combination of options one and two. That is, you can do all research studies and get 10 credits that way. You could do all articles and get your credits that way, or any combination. You could do five research credits and five articles, or two articles and eight research credits. Uh, however you want to do it is fine. Uh, most people just do the research credits, but you can do any combination of articles and research credits. But regardless, all your research credits must be earned by Friday of Dead Week, Friday, November the 20th. 
All right, let's talk about the course grading. Course grading are two types of points on the course. The base course points, which are required, and bonus points, which aren't. So those are like extra credit points. So your base course points, there's going to be your 12 highest test scores out of the 14. Uh, 30 points apiece, so 360 possible points there. There are going to be 20 research credit points, uh, so you got you do 10 credits worth two points apiece, so that's 20. So that's 380 base points in the course. Now, your grade is going to be uh, based on the total base course points, but it's going to be the mean of the 10 highest base course point scores in the class. So if we started giving really, really hard tests that everybody flunked, well, uh, that wouldn't be very nice. And so what we do is, rather than taking 380 as 100%, We'll take the 10 highest scores in the class, average those together, and whatever that average is, that's 100%. Okay, So that's, there's not really a curve applied other than that, but that's a way we protect you from if we gave impossibly hard tests and nobody can get right, well, then the top 10 people won't get very high scores, and so that keeps the 100% at, at those 10 scores. So that's how that's going to work. Now. Uh, here are the percentages off the average of the 10 highest base points. There's no curve, and in fact, everybody in the class could earn an A. If you get 93% or more of the average of the 10 highest scores, you're going to get an A, okay, no matter what. So that's the cool thing. I think we'd love to give everybody an A in the class, so we're not going to curve it. Everybody could get an A in the class. The final grade will be your base letter grade plus your bonus points or extra credit points. You can earn 10 additional research credits uh, as extra credit. Each additional research credit is worth two points. And you could also do articles to get the extra points as well. Again, every article you do after you've gotten your 10 research credits would be worth two points. So you can do up to 10, that would be up to 20 points of extra credit you can get by doing additional research studies. We will add that to your score and then calculate your percentage off that. Okay. Now, one more time, I want to emphasize, I want you to send all emails, any email at all, anything regarding the class, to psych101 at iastate.edu. I'm going to ask you that question on the test on Friday. It's the only question from this syllabus portion I'm going to ask. But that's really, really important. Lots of problems occur when people don't send the emails to psych101 at iastate.edu. Now, it is terrible answering questions under these circumstances. And so, I bet you have some questions maybe about this lecture or about the lecture that I have posted up there now. I want your questions answered. That's super, super important to me. And so you should send an email to psych101 at iastate.edu with any questions that you have about the class. Uh, those will get the, any questions about the course content will be forwarded to me, and I will answer them because usually people have lots of questions about psychology. And I want you to, that's one of the, the advantages of an in-person class is we can answer those questions, but it's going to be harder when we're doing it online. So uh, I'm sorry we have to do things uh, this way where I'm doing it online and never see you, but I sure do want to make sure all your questions get answered. That's super important. Well, I'm looking forward to this semester. I love teaching this class because I think it's so fun. I hope I can get you fired up about psychology. And so what I would say is what you need to be working on is print out the lecture outline for the lecture on uh, August 18th. Watch the lecture and fill in the outline as you're going along. Also, I'd encourage you to read the mods 1, mod 2, and mod 3 in the textbook. Those are the readings for this week. I'll be sending more announcements through the announcements section. Uh, and uh, that'll keep you updated on when the tests are coming up and where to find the tests and things like that. So, looking forward to the semester, and we will talk again soon.